Okay, so hi everybody. Um, so this is a discussion about uh, hot pluggable hardware on non-discoverable buses using uh, runtime loadable device tree overlays. Uh, I'm Luca, and my colleague Ray is working with me on this project. Uh, so Hervé is going to introduce you the, the project. See, so the, the, um, the contact for our LCKR product, we have already a quite advanced hardware prototype. In fact, it's going to be launched ne next year. So it's a classical ARM64 embedded system on one side and some add-on boards on the other side. So on the main board, we have the SOC and a bunch uh, of uh, resources connected to a connector such as GPIO, uh, some buses such as I2C, DSI for some display, <coughs> that all while on a connector and we have several add-on boards that can be connected and disconnected by the end user of the product at some times when the system is running, any time when the system is running and we have some devices on this add-on board related to display, related to some sensors, and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> we already supported device three on the baseboard. We have some adding some hardware, and to do that, we have thought about <coughs> device three overlays. So we wrote a connector drivers, we load overlays, two overlays in two steps, because we need to identify the add-on board and to do that, we have some IDs stored in EEPROM on the add-on board. So we have a first overlay describing this EEPROM. And based on the value we read on the EEPROM, we can select the second overlay and apply this overlay. So this works pretty well, I would say. <coughs> but some issues are still open on this kind of topic. Uh, just for information, we pointed out some related works from several people we know working on this kind of stuff. So feel free to, to have a look if you need some more information. There is some pointers. I just, just wanted to mention also my own uh, attempt to upstream uh, Raspberry Pi RP1 uh, uh, support uh, that is currently under discussion in many lists. And it's basically based on the same approach that you used on the microchip LAN 96 6X. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, just a, a fast yeah. one. So, uh, we use that at the previous company, like same, same use case, odd pluggable board. And the issue we had is when we remove the board, we remove the valet, but then we get a message that it will, it will leak memory. So I don't know if this is fixed or, uh, yeah, this is a point we, we, we faced. Okay, thank you. And actually, uh, this opens something about device tree bindings. So let me just first introduce, uh, the bindings. Um, so, uh, where is it? Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, there is a, uh, a connector uh, node. So it's a device. It has a compatible string. It, it has a driver. Um, so it, it, it populates as a device. It uses the GPIO to know whether there is something connected. And then um, we have some nodes, which are a bit unusual in some sense. So uh, there is this I2C dash whatever for each uh, I2C bus on the connector, uh, going through the connector where the controller is on the baseboard. Uh, this node points to the actual controller, which is on the baseboard, but it's uh, empty uh, for now. Um, something somewhat similar for the DSI BDO bus. Uh, there is this kind of classic DSI representation with ports, and there is only one port, which is the one facing the main board, so the one from the CPU. Uh, and then when we added the overlay, one key thing was to uh, use overlays in the way that appears to us as the appropriate uh, use of overlays. So you add hardware and then you add overlays um, representing this additional hardware. And uh, new hardware is represented by new nodes. Each device is a new node. That's true for many cases. There are gray areas, but as you can see in the i 2 c debat node, which was in, in the base tree, we are adding in here one subnode, which is one device. It's an APROM, which contains the model ID. So in this case, there is no problem with properties. We are not adding properties. Uh, if uh, the problem exists, if you add properties uh, in an overlay uh, to a node that is already in the live tree. Um, so you can add properties 
inside nodes, but not at the top level of the overlay. Uh, one goal for the V3 of the pet set was to remove all of them. Uh, we are adding devices, so we want to add nodes. We only have two left, which is the NVMan cells and NVMan cell NAPES, which are used for now uh, for the connector driver to access the NVMan cell and read the uh, model ID. Uh, we are working on how to remove also those two. Uh, so the goal is to not use them at all. Uh, we discussed that with Christophe also yesterday, and uh, that seems to be the correct way. Uh, this is something that was suggested by Rob, and it really seems to be the, the correct way to, to go. Um, so the, the, I hope this kind of answered your question. Uh, so the next uh, step, so with the first overlay, the, the, the driver is able to access the NVMem cell, know the model ID, and then it loads the appropriate uh, second overlay with everything else on the add-on, on the specific model. Uh, so in this, in this example, we have, uh, again, the DSI port node, uh, which contains the other port, the other side of the connector, uh, leading to whatever is on the add-on, to so the continuation of the uh, video pipeline. And then there is the devices node, uh, which is where we put, uh, well, basically it's platform devices in the Linux uh, kernel sense. So it's devices which have, in our case, no bus at all, like regulators and, and similar uh, simple devices, which, uh, yeah, uh, which uh, Linux will probe at as platform devices. Uh, yes, I have a question. Know? Typically, platform devices, you do memory mapped I.O. You can just access them directly. I thought this is sitting across a connector. How do you handle them as platform devices? Well, platform devices are in two families, basically the, those on a memory mapped IO bus and those without any bus, they are, they are uh, implemented as, as platform devices in Linux. Uh, the first category does not exist in our case, and I think it's pretty un, unlikely to exist in, in a real connector because it would have so many lines, it would be really a huge connector. Uh, people nowadays use USB, PCI, whatever. So I don't expect that we even exist. So like how do you talk to the I2C controller sitting on the other bus? Well, those are not actually on any bus. So you <coughs> they, they are added as if they were at the top level of the uh, device tree. But in the practice, they don't connect to any bus. Just to help, the I2C controller is in the SOC, and the I2C bus goes through the connector. Right, so if you're talking to us, okay. when you talk to the platform devices, it's regulators. They, you don't talk to them, it's a fixed regulator, it's just a power rail on your, on your add-on board. So there's no communication with it, it's just on. Um, so, yeah, back to the bindings. So the, the only remaining problem about bindings is uh, NVMem cells and NVMem uh, cell names, as I, as I told. Uh, so we are uh, considering what solution to, to use, and the one that seems the most promising is uh, this one in picture. So basically moving those two properties into a subnode, add-on ID, which kind of looks like let's hide that under the carpet to some extent, but I'm looking at you, Christoph Connor. If you have better <laughs> ideas, I'm all ears. Uh, that seems something that would work. Uh, implementation should be just a, a few additional lines of code to locate the node and pass that to whatever <coughs> NVMain function takes a, a node pointer. Uh, that's our current plan. Uh, any better ones would be very welcome, of course. Isn't there some resemblance with the board ID stuff from Qualcomm? Kind of, but the problem here is that you are, should not add the properties to the other device node, right? So, and the Qualcomm solves totally different problem. But I don't think that you will have, you will also be solving the same problem. So, just looks the same coincidence. No, in this case, you add uh, a reference to a place where you can read the ID. In the Qualcomm case, you would put the ID inside the DT, which means that you need a different overlay if you would do the same here, you would need a different overlay for each thing, but then you need to know which one to load, which is the chicken and egg problem. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, um, th there are other ideas about the NVMe, but they are way less uh, promising, so I'm not even mentioning them. Um, 
So uh, about the, the implementation itself, uh, I'm, I'm going to quickly introduce how the connector driver work, which is conceptually very, very simple. Uh, so it, it detects uh, there's something connected to a GPIO. It loads the first overlay and populates the device in that, so up to the uh, memory with the, doc, uh, the, the ID of the board. And uh, based on that, it loads the second overlay with everything else, and then it populates that, and, and that's all. Uh, everything is present in Linux, is, is used, and when uh, the connector is removed, uh, which happens without notice, uh, so that's not super nice, uh, but uh, immediately the driver unloads the two overlays in reverse order. Um, that's working pretty well in the practice, uh, except for the issues with some specific aspects that I'm going to mention. Uh, so the one that is at the moment the most blurry one and uh, hints and discussion would be extremely welcome on this is how to handle uh, GPIOs and interrupt. So uh, differently from I2C, platform devices, DSI and whatever, um, this is not easily solvable by just adding nodes. Uh, <coughs> which is the, the, the main goal, uh, because you have a GPU controller handling interrupts also on the baseboard, and you have users on the, on the add-on board, which normally have a p-handle uh, pointing to the GPU controller. Uh, we cannot have p-handles uh, reference across the overlay boundaries to avoid, well, uh, to decouple uh, the, 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 the baseboard from the add-on and also to avoid the uh, memory leak issues. Uh, so we, we need some, some solution. This is some, uh, yes, Kurt? Mike? Oh. Can't you use the uh, Nexus node for that? GPO Nexus, Introp Nexus? What? Nexus node. It's in the device tree specification. It's basically some translation layer for GPIOs or interrupts. Okay. Across uh, a, a node boundary. If you can give me a specific pointer to that, I will look at that shortly. I'm pretty sure that the most recent version of the Beagle Play connector thing is, uh, is using it. So you can take okay. a look at that for, for what, what, what they're doing. Okay, so I... You mean the the microbus patch series? Yeah, but there's a, a version. Um, God, there's no. <laughs> it's not listed here. It's uh, listed as it went back to version zero. But check out the 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 unversioned most recent version of that from like this current week, and they've switched to that. Okay, we'll we'll check that out. Um, Mike, Mike. Search for Nexus in the specification. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, uh, well, just to mention our approach uh, for, for discussion, uh, it's actually something that we still have to test, so it's just theory for now. Um, so we, well, something we attempted and it doesn't work is to have the uh, GPO controller in the base, uh, in the main board, uh, normal, a normal GPO controller. And then in the overlay, we just repeat the same node without any, adding any nothing. So it's just looking at like an, an empty node, but we add a label that's trying to add a label inside the overlay. Uh, it doesn't work. This is discarded uh, explicitly by the uh, overlay loading code in the kernel. And even if we disable that line, it breaks somewhere else. So no, the, that was just a wild attempt. Uh, the other wild attempt, we did this one, uh, which is again, uh, so it's, it's somewhat similar. There is a GPO controller on the, well, a, a, a GPO something on the baseboard with point, it, it's basi based on the uh, GPO ag aggregator. So it points to actual GPIOs from other controllers on the uh, baseboard, it aggregates them. But then in the add-on we add a subnode and that subnode has GPIO controller, GPIO interrupts, and the cells. So it kind of looks like a GPIO controller provider. And uh, it has a label which is used inside the overlay itself. So that's an idea to, to, to attempt. Uh, so that, 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 that this is just maybe looking like, again, moving things into a subnode. Uh, I don't know. 
So this is just one of the, uh, I don't know how the other Nexus proposal works, so I, I have no idea. Well, uh, how they solve on Nexus the, the piano issue, in fact. <clears throat> yeah, how does it? The, the how do you reference some? Uh, yeah. For example, for interrupts, I think it uses interrupt map and interrupt map mask. So the interrupt map is then an array of pianos and specifiers which takes care of the translation. And when, it, when the child node refers to that one and you look up a GPIO, then the core OF code will notice that there's an interrupt map and then it will follow the map to the upstream interrupt controller. And it's similar for GPIOs. Yeah, PCI uh, uses something similar. I don't think that interrupt maps will solve the issue because um, when we wrote a line from the interrupt map array, you know, it's an array of several items, and in one item, you have to refer with a handle the interrupt controller in the interrupt maps to do the translation. So uh, he's saying basically the. The Nexus node, I'm assuming, if I understand you correctly, and kind of guesstimating here, will be part of the baseboard, which says this is how we map the interrupt coming from my child nodes into the main interrupt controller. And then if you add the overlay underneath it, is but that what you're saying? What handle do you put to the overlay? You should, just the overlay. The problem is here that the overlay can be applied to different boards, right? So uh, what sort of handle would you put to the overlay? I mean, like, um, uh, what sort of label would you reference via handle? You don't know. I mean, the, the one the, I really you want don't have an access because the overlay is to this board or that board. Uh, right? I really want to have a handle telling my GPIO on my connector, GPIO A on my connector, whatever the connector I am plugging, in fact. Map needs to be on the base overlay, but the P handle needs to reference something in the inside the overlay. Yeah, I think to to phrase it differently for all the buses, if it's I square C or GPIO or DSI or whatever, uh, the the devices on the add-on should only know the bus they're using on the connector, maybe A B C, and then the thing that describes the main board then maps that to the buses of the SOC. So maybe bus A on the connector is I square C1, but on a completely different baseboard that's I square C bus A would be I square C5 or whatnot. So we need to strictly decouple the two so the overlay cannot know what's on the baseboard, but only the, the signals on the connector. I think it's really that. Yeah. It's really quick, in Zephyr we address that problem with what we call Zephyr chosen nodes which is like just an arbitrary device tree alias to a p-handle that a board would mandatorily define if they want to use such an interface. Oh. Let's see if I can, uh, let's have an intermediate maybe. Or let's. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's, that's more question to you. So, but you cannot alias the particular GPIO. You can only uh, alias the node, I think. But, uh, so you, you cannot say that yeah this uh, this is GPIO A, uh, or because uh, G, uh, that's a GPIO number thirteen on the uh, on the GPIO controller tree. Okay. Uh, the GPIO aggregator which allows you to partition the entire GPIO controller. So basically you can make a one GPIO a new controller. So this is how you alias it. <coughs> yeah, it's different binding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. This ha probably this has been already discussed uh, with the Beagle and with the Nexus node. Like, can we really have the uh, connector node in the uh, in the root of the device tree, or well, under the root of the device tree? Because that seems like a board device, and then describe, or, well, basically describe that it has links to, and then you need a special driver for that uh, for for the connector that really just passes through all the all the buses and all, all everything. I, uh, probably I'm missing a point in that. I, I think th the main point is we need uh, to, to do a two-step decoupling, like take the I2C. Uh, so there is this I2C debut, which is just the name of an I2C line that crosses the connector. 
This node on the base tree associates uh, these two wires on the connector are coming from I squared C2 CH1 from the base board. It does the association on the side of the fixed board. And then on the overlay, we do the association from the connector to the devices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we cannot associate directly the controller to the device because that would make the overlay not portable. Yeah, yeah that, that's clear. I, I mean, you, you had the issue with the interrupts and with the GPIOs, if I got it correctly. So yeah. why can't you describe them in exactly the same way? Tell that your adapter or uh, your connector is a GPIO controller and uh, it provides, I don't know how many, 10 GPIOs and then you map uh, in, inside the bindings, you tell that, yeah. You mean the connector is a GPIO controller? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, uh, except uh, the problem, we cannot have a P handle, like a device on the add-on has a P handle, uh, interrupt, uh, or GPIO, blah, blah, equals an a P handle pointing to the connector, because the connector is a node in the base tree. Yeah, we, cannot have, we cannot reference anything in the base tree, basically. We need a node that is inside the overlay. Why, why, can't you, why, why can't you reference the base tree? I mean, if it is labeled, you can. No, uh, because that would make it... Uh, property uh, leaks in the same board as nodes. Yeah, yeah, there is the issue with property leaks in, in when you're adding properties, but also that uh, you are not decoupling the add-on from the base board. Yeah, you can have multiple uh, connectors. Connector, you you can have multiple of the same connectors and multiple of the uh, yeah. subboards. But you can play with the symbols, which is what one of the other patch series is doing. Yes, but that reintroduces the memory leak problem with the properties. <laughs> so we are doomed. <laughs> Add more memory. <laughs> okay, so I, I, my, my takeaway is that our solution Kind of sucks, but there is no better proposal. <laughs> Obviously, perfect. So, well, uh, we'll experiment with that. Uh, yep, that's that's all I think. We we had wow, well, have uh, many many other yeah many other aspects, <laughs> but so basically, platform devices are already quite well handled by oh. the driver. I square C devices, uh, due to the flooding, were from could not come, so we can discuss that. I guess. Um, uh, DRM was discussed two days ago in another session, and we have a bunch of issues related to DevLink, which we discussed with Saravana. We had a very long lunch break with Saravana yesterday. There is some path forward. Uh, I'd be glad to take more questions, but not sure time is. Uh, could you talk a bit more about its dead props problem? Because uh, if you have symbols, you can just add a new label. You can have more than one label for the same node. So the only problem that remains is this dead, dead props problem, yeah. which, yeah. So can you talk a bit about That problem exists since, since, since forever with uh, overlay. So if an overlay adds a property um, into a node, but the node is in the live tree, so it's not in inside the overlay, uh, that... Uh, Properties don't have ref counting. And so what happens is any driver can take your property, can take the string, take a pointer to that, and nobody knows on when it will stop using that. So uh, if you release the property when you remove the overlay, you, will, you could have da uh, dangling pointers, use after free. Uh, to avoid use after free, uh, the OF core, the device tree core, uh, doesn't release them. It puts them into a dead properties list and it never deletes them, basically. Uh, so that's considered a memory leak. In fact, it will be released when the node containing the properties is going to be released. Yeah. But it's not on the base tree and it's never been released. And there is anyway a, another aspect which is more, let's say, uh, philosophical design issue. Uh, so that was something I discussed with, with Rob Herring. And uh, so the idea is if you add a piece of hardware, typically you should add a node, which is true for what we do with I2C and with platform devices, but there are gray areas like these interrupts and GPIOs, which are not easily manageable. So that's why that's the main topic. Okay, we got it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.